We have new details on an Omaha doctor who did cosmetic surgery on women. He is now the subject of malpractice lawsuits. Tonight we know more about the legal cases against him. It's a story we first brought you on 3 News Now. More people are coming forward saying they too had problems after surgery. Now a board certified plastic surgeon is shedding light on what he calls a growing problem. 3 News Now senior reporter Jake Wazikowski is live with the latest details. Jake. Guys, the attorney who filed the lawsuit, James Martin Davis, says two other women are being examined for malpractice and four others have contacted him this week. He says Dr. Gerard Stanley is a family medicine doctor scarring unsuspecting women. A stack of lawsuits filed on behalf of seven women and a few husbands claim Dr. Gerard Stanley left them with scars and deformities, some that will cost tens of thousands of dollars or can't be repaired. This is video of him from a March 2017 story about microneedling. They went to Dr. Stanley at Sculpt Cosmetic Surgery for liposuction, buttocks lifts, breast augmentations and eye lifts in the last two years. The women claim he's performing surgeries while only certified as a family doctor. When done correctly in the right patients, it's incredibly transforming. When done incorrectly in the wrong patients by the wrong guy, it's deforming. Dr. Roddy Robon is a top Beverly Hills plastic surgeon who says one third of his patients come in to repair previous surgeries. Through FaceTime, he tells 3 News now the problem is growing. Plastic surgeons need six to eight years residency while cosmetic surgeons don't need any while doing similar procedures. Dr. Stanley's website says he did a rural family practice and surgery residency at North Colorado Medical Center. A hospital rep tells me he did complete a family practice residency, but they do not have a surgical residency. So when they says board certified plastic surgeon, they're board certified in plastic surgery. Board certified cosmetic surgeon, as in this case, is a family practitioner board certified who's now doing cosmetic surgery. You see how misleading that is? Dr. Robin says patients need to do their homework. Make sure they are board certified and know what they are board certified in. He adds that the government isn't watching cosmetic surgeons, even though it may seem like they have a good reputation. The problem is you can do anything you want in America, more or less, in your own private, private surgery center. And so long as you have a fancy website and you have a bunch of little letters after your name, people will get misled. And, you know, unfortunately, the patients are the only ones that are going to pay the price, both financially and more importantly, mentally and physically. Nebraska DHHS says surgery is within the scope of practice for a licensed physician unless there's a restriction. The state does not have a consumer web page on plastic surgery. The attorney for Dr. Stanley did not return a phone call today. Reporting live, Jake Wasikowski, 3 News Now. A developing story at 6, Council Bluffs police say they located three people who were unconscious near the DNS Express gas station last night around 10 p.m. A half an hour later, they found a man at a home a few blocks away. All four people went to area hospitals and are suspected of overdosing on fentanyl. One of them is no longer receiving treatment. Fentanyl is a drug that can be extremely dangerous even for an accidental exposure. Police are investigating the incidents. Big cuts are coming to the University of Nebraska. President Hank Bounds spelled out $25 million in reductions today. That will include job loss. 3 News Now reporter Nick Starling talked with Bounds and has the plan. It's roughly $49 million the university needs to cut out of its budget. We told you earlier about $19 million coming from tuition increases. The next step is staff reductions and consolidation. We are looking for every penny that we can find. Hoping pennies turn into millions of dollars of savings. NU President Hank Bounds discusses the struggle of filling the nearly $49 million gap. We have found a number of areas where we think that we can drive down we hope we can drive down expenses. Bound says consolidation will happen to a few areas in facilities and energy, procurement, human resources, and IT, which will make up roughly 80% of the $30 million they need to cut. Bound says this is a way to streamline agencies on all four campuses with one team. We don't have to have every type of expertise sitting on the Kearney campus or, on the, or pick the campus to do everything. Starting on September 1st, the university will reduce the mileage reimbursement rate for employees driving their own vehicles. 
from 53 and a half cents per mile to 25 cents, which is roughly a $550,000 savings. Also getting the axe are jobs. Can I tell you today the number? No, I can't. Right now, Bound says they are still working out those details, but the majority of the job cuts will come from those consolidated areas. We can then take retirements or other attrition and often not fill those positions. While this is the budget plan now, Bounds hopes the dismal state economic forecast doesn't cut any more from NU's bottom line. I think a real tragedy for the state really would be if we let um, a couple years of downturn in the economy have a long-term negative impact on the future of the University of Nebraska. This comes after a university announces a 9% increase over the next two years. From here, the next step happens in September, where they will make a decision on whose job will be cut and many more changes to the consolidation plans. Reporting in studio, Nick Starling, 3 News Now. Now, your weather alert first forecast. It's been a warm and cloudy day, especially in the afternoon and now carrying over into the evening. Showers and thunderstorms are also breaking out back to the north of us right now. Severe thunderstorm watch, even some warnings over the central part of the state. No watches and warnings in effect for us, but we still have some fairly strong thunderstorms getting a little bit closer to Norfolk and even off to the north of Wayne around the Columbus area. You'll continue to see the activity increasing in your direction. I think most of the activity will hold off here in the Omaha Metro until the overnight hours, maybe after about 10 o'clock tonight, which is great news. If you have plans to head out to the Springfield Fairgrounds for the Sarpy County Fair, I'm looking at temperatures here from the 80s into the upper 70s here into the evening with light winds from the northeast about five miles an hour. I'll have the latest timeline on the storms and what kind of impacts we can expect as we go into the overnight hours. It's 605. Here's a look at stories we're tracking right now. We now know more about a near drowning Tuesday night just south of the downtown area. First responders went to a house near 15th and Martha after 930 PM. According to a police report, a friend found 39 year old Roberto Mendez Martinez motionless in a backyard pool. Paramedics took him to the hospital in critical condition. A doctor confirmed he was intoxicated, but the man is expected to survive. Police ticketed the driver of a motorcycle after smacking into an SUV at 156th and Q last night. Police say 18 year old Roland Ladenson's motorcycle collided with an SUV, which was making a northbound turn onto 156th. Witnesses told police the motorcycle was speeding. Ladenson went to Nebraska Medicine with serious leg injuries, which are not considered life threatening. Lincoln police say somebody threw a piece of concrete at a squad car. These are pictures showing a busted windshield right in front of the driver's seat. Some pieces of glass hit the officer. Police found the concrete, which is about the size of a baseball, in the same area where three vandalisms were reported in mid-June. Police are looking for the person who did this. An update now to a story we brought you last month. An Iowa judge lowered the bond for an elderly man accused of sexually abusing a minor in Council Bluffs. The Pottawatomie County attorney tells us it's now $100,000 for 77 year old Donald Bramer. He's facing child sex abuse charges. The alleged incident took place at his apartment in Council Bluffs. He's due back in court in September. At least one person is dead and several others injured after a gas explosion leveled part of a Minnesota school. The blast rocked the Minnehaha Academy in Minneapolis earlier today and part of the building collapsed. Seven people remain in the hospital tonight and three are in critical condition. It was a huge explosion. Uh, smoke went up, knocked most of us kind of back. I heard the blast, felt the windows shake. Uh, the dogs were um, uh, startled. The search continues for two others tonight. An emergency room doctor says most of the injured suffered from blunt trauma and injuries from being thrown. A bill designed to help legal permanent residents who are the spouses of police officers or firefighters killed in the line of duty gain citizenship is gaining momentum. It's named after fallen Omaha police officer Carrie Orozco. Her husband Hector Orozco, who came here from Mexico, was in the process of applying for American citizenship when a wanted felon shot and killed his wife in North Omaha. He now holds a green card. The NAACP is now supporting the bill in Congress. I'm getting a lot of pledges from, I'll just say senior leadership to move this bill and that we think it's needed. And now to have NAACP support, uh, it will just increase the bipartisanship and the broad-based support that the bill has. 
Congressman Don Bacon says the legislation will give relatives of first responders the same courtesy received by those of fallen military members. The bill needs the support of the House before it can head to the Senate. Iowa congressional lawmakers legislation to promote women owned businesses moves forward. The Senate committee approved Senator Joni Ernst's measure to conduct a study on those businesses owners. It's a step toward them receiving federal contract money. In Iowa, about 82,000 small businesses are owned by women. The Iowa governor talked about her plan to help 72,000 Iowans if they lose health care coverage under the Affordable Care Act. Right now, Medica is the only insurer offering policies through Obamacare in the state. The insurance company might still drop out of the market in 2018. Kim Reynolds is calling on federal lawmakers and health care administrators to come up with a different plan to stop the gap if Medica leaves. I've said all along, this is a short-term fix. This is not uh, a long-term fix. We are still need Washington, D.C. to uh, implement change. Obamacare is not affordable, it's not workable, it's not sustainable. Today, an appeals court made a ruling that would help states defend government cost-sharing methods to pay Obamacare costs if the Trump administration decides to stop payments. Questions about carnival, carnival ride safety are mounting after a young man died when a ride broke apart at the Ohio State Fair. We checked on the ride inspections out at the Sarpy County Fair, which gets going tonight. A state team spent several hours testing and checking them for any malfunctions. All 25 of them passed and are ready for riders. They're checking all the rides for electrical grounds. They check them mechanically and operationally, too. They, they run every ride out here. Gary Montgomery owns the rides at the fair. He says that each ride operator completes their own inspection before they open each day. A recent study found that rural schools can face similar safety issues as larger schools in larger cities. Next, we'll take a closer look at how federal money aims to make sure every school in the state is secure. And some storms beginning to move into parts of eastern Nebraska. I'll let you know how this will impact the, the rest of your evening and into the overnight next. It's 2.30 and they're sick. I'll never get them into the doctor today. You can when you call Boys Town Same Day Pediatrics. When they're sick, you can count on us. It's the biggest sale of the year at Lebeda Mattress Factory. Summer clearance. Pillow tops, latex hybrids, memory foam beds, even bedroom furniture. Get special summer clearance prices on nearly everything in the store. Flippable two-sided queen sets start at $2.98. Or get an incredible price on a very special Lebeda mattress set, the Augusta Pillow Top. Soft and supportive with cooling gel and memory foam, now only $4.98 with free local delivery or a free bed frame. Don't miss the biggest sale of the year. Summer clearance at Lebeda Mattress Factory. What word best describes the 80th anniversary celebration at Nebraska Furniture Mart? It's big! And the mattress deals are no exception. Get a Serta Perfect Sleeper King Size mattress set for the price of a queen. Get 10% off the Mart price on Beautyrest, Sealy, and Heirloom mattress sets. Shop with 18 up to 70 month financing and make no down payment. The 80th anniversary celebration is big! And so are the mattress savings, including that big King for a Queen mattress deal now at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Low testosterone can cause these symptoms. Weight gain, lack of concentration, loss of muscle mass, no energy, low libido. Why should you live this way when testosterone is replaceable? See the trusted local physicians that specialize in men's health at Limitless Male Medical. We can help you reverse aging and feel young again. Most insurance accepted. Call today or visit online. Limitless Male Medical, 119th and Pacific. Be a hero again. College education is changing. Choosing the right school is the key to a quality education. National American University has been helping students reach their educational goals for 75 years. NAU accepts credits earned at other colleges and grants credit for qualified learning experiences so you can continue your education and earn your degree. Make the right choice. Get the credit you deserve. National.edu. National. Gretna. Thanks for watching KMTV3. 
Safety in schools is a top priority for educators. Officials are hoping a recently awarded federal grant will make every school in our state safe, no matter the size or amount of resources. And Gramley Zink takes us into the classroom as we go back to school. I think there is this belief in, and appropriately, that rural areas tend to be safer, and generally they are. Despite statistics, University of Nebraska Public Policy Center Director Dr. Mario Scalora says all schools should be prepared for anything, from a school shooting to a natural disaster. But sometimes rural schools face obstacles, such as minimal police presence or a very limited tax base. Hopefully, a newly awarded federal research grant will change that. They are safe now they are going to become safer, and that's what we're excited about. Jolene Palmer of the Nebraska Department of Education says the more than $645,000 two-year grant will help her department work with the Public Policy Center to collect data, assess schools, and survey law enforcement from more than 150 rural schools throughout Nebraska. It's not about pointing out what's wrong. It's about let's look at what we need to provide you more with support. The goal is to come up with a model that encompasses different practices and things rural schools can do creatively and cost effectively to increase safety and emergency preparedness. Despite things like lack of state funding or having a school resource officer, many rural schools like Mead have taken safety measures into their own hands. So we just added this one this summer because we noticed we had a, a spot in the building that we couldn't see. Despite the small size, Mead Public School Superintendent Dr. Dale Rawson is big on safety. It doesn't happen happen very often, but you can never, ever say it won't happen. The district only has about 250 students, but both schools are locked during the day, have security cameras, and new emergency alert systems are in place for the start of this school year. With the recent recommendation of local law enforcement, Dawson implemented the standard response protocol, I love you guys. It uses the terms lock out. They all have deadbolts. Lock down. Kids are sheltered out of sight. Evacuate and shelter. Locks, lights, out of sight. Dawson says he's going to continue to find ways to make his school safer. This is where we put the entire student body. And increase the number of yearly drills. We all want to protect our children. I mean, that's just the normal, uh, normal thing we would like to do. And I'm glad that the department is working to help us make safe schools. Emily Zink, 3 News Now. Now, your weather alert forecast. We've been talking about the weather changes and they're moving into the area as we speak. Cold front arrived last night, at least one of them. So we have a series of fronts that will be impacting us here over the next couple of days. One of them's down in the south of us moving through Kansas City. Another one is organizing over the western half of the state and will be arriving through the overnight hours. We already have some showers and some thunderstorms kind of impacting parts of eastern Nebraska right now. Moving into Norfolk, we have some severe thunderstorm watches and warnings in effect for the central part of the state does not impact us, so we're not under any watches or warnings and right now the overall threat for severe weather is expected to be on the low side but right now some stronger storms firing up over the Norfolk area getting a little bit closer to Wayne Columbus you'll see a few showers popping up here as far as the overall storm threat for our area, it really goes into the overnight hours early tomorrow morning. We're looking at a very low risk. It's marginal. That means an isolated strong or severe thunderstorm across the area. Some small hail, gusty winds, heavy rainfall, and occasional lightning I think could be the biggest concerns that we could be dealing with. As this next little wave moves through, the main energy of the storm system really kind of parks itself over Minnesota, extreme eastern Iowa. On the backside of the storm system, cooler air will be funneling in, invading the state. That will allow temperatures to be significantly cooler than they have been here over the past couple of days. And we're looking at maybe just a few little late day stray showers popping up. As far as the overall precipitation, expected to be on the light side, but some areas could see some decent rainfall amounts, about a quarter to a half an inch across eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. Right now we're sitting with mostly cloudy skies, 84 degrees. Our winds are out of the north at six miles an hour. And our extended forecast here over the hour by hour forecast shows us with the 80s up until about nine o'clock tonight. We keep the clouds around here. Chances for storms really picking up, I think, between about 1 to 2 o'clock in the morning. At least that's what the latest models are showing. And you can see that wave moves through pretty rapidly. If you are a light sleeper, don't be surprised if you hear some thunder and lightning during the early morning hours. And if you have any patio furniture, like your umbrellas or any cushions that you want to bring inside, might be a good idea to do that here for this evening. In the morning, we start off with some low to mid 60s. In the afternoon, I'm looking at high temperatures, almost 10 degrees cooler. 
than what we've had today. 70s and 60s. We're looking at about 73 in Blair tomorrow, 74 here in the Omaha Metro from around 74 in Ralston and La Vista. You'll be at about 73 degrees for your high temperature on Thursday. 67 with some scattered storms, mainly after 10 o'clock. And I think the majority of the activity moves in here about 2 o'clock in the morning, pretty much out of here by around 6 to 7 o'clock. So we'll see an improvement during the early morning rush with a high of 77 degrees over the next three days. We're going to see 70 sticking around here for the next 72 hours, really going into the weekend. Another system moves in here Saturday and Sunday, and that will bring us a chance for some scattered showers early on Saturday and potentially throughout the day on Sunday. Not a washout, won't rain all weekend long, so I think your outdoor activities should be in pretty good shape. 80s return by the early part of next week. All right. all right, lot to like there. The Creighton volleyball team goes into the new season with high expectations. Where the Blue Jays are picked to finish in the, in the Big East next in sports. to death. I'd call it a good night's work. Brought to you by Omaha Marine Center. Sizzling summer new and used boat blowout going on now. For a quality used vehicle, go to BaxterAuto.com. All with market value pricing. Shop over 2,000 quality used vehicles at 20 different local dealerships. All used vehicles come with a 125 point inspection, free vehicle history report, and a three day money back guarantee. See what your vehicle is worth now at BaxterAuto.com and let Baxter buy your vehicle. Search, shop, and save at BaxterAuto.com. Turn up the heat with incredible savings during Menard's Red Hot Sale. Great Lakes pre-finished hardwood flooring offers superior quality and timeless beauty. Pre-finished solid oak comes in two finishes, 337 a square foot. Or get pre-finished solid hickory for 419 a square foot. Update your doors with true bolt knobs and levers. This Dublin entry knob in a polished brass finish is 1099. This Trinidad entry lever in a nickel finish is 2599. Now during Menard's Red Hot Sale. Save big money at Menard's. The internet revolutionized how talent's discovered. And now we're revolutionizing the way you get internet. Introducing CenturyLink, price for life. Get speeds up to 20 megs starting at $45 a month and keep that price year after year. No hidden fees, no contract. Finally, an internet price you can count on. Speed may not be available in your area. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Your Omaha Sports Insider Report. There's already one Lamar Jackson that's made his name in college football. The Louisville quarterback won the Heisman Trophy last year. Now, Nebraska defensive back Lamar Jackson hopes to add some national recognition this fall. The Husker sophomore made his presence felt against Fresno State in last year's season opener with six tackles. Jackson made his first career start in the Music City Bowl, racking up a team-high eight tackles. Now the California native wants more consistency in his second season at NU. Like as of like day-to-day -day work, like going to work type thing, mindset totally different. Last year, like it was times where I wasn't feel like I, like I didn't feel like practicing. I'm gonna go out there and just go through the motions. I, that's not an option this year. I make sure each day I'm setting the bar. I gotta make sure I'm there every day, giving my best. So I feel like my mindset totally different. I'm on another level. Lamar already has shows a big jump, just in not just his play. His play is never really the problem. The biggest thing for him is maturity. He got a little bit of a humble pie as a true freshman. And I think he's coming off that and his confidence and everything is growing. Jackson and the Huskers return to the practice field tomorrow. And for more coverage of Nebraska's fall camp, head to omahasportsinsider.com, run by 3 News Now and AM 590 ESPN Omaha. The team next on our Big Ten previews is the last school Nebraska beat on the road. Indiana has a new head coach. Tom Allen takes over for Kevin Wilson, who abruptly resigned last December after allegations of player mistreatment. Allen was the Hoosiers defensive coordinator in 2016. Although the 47-year-old's first head coaching job in college is his first, he's confident about making IU relevant in the league. It's been 50 years since we won the Big Ten. It's been 26 years since we won a bowl game. 
It's been 10 years since we had a winning season in Indiana. We're going to accomplish all three of those, I told our team. If you don't believe that, you need to leave. Indiana returns 15 starters, including nine on defense. Quarterback Richard Lego threw for over 3,300 yards last year. The Hoosiers open the season Thursday, August 31st, at home against Ohio State, whose offensive coordinator now, Kevin Wilson, the former IU coach. To volleyball now, where Creighton has won the Big East Conference for the last three years, so it's no, no surprise that the Jays are the unanimous pick to win the league once again. Kirsten Bernthal Booth's team returns five starters from a squad that went to the Elite Eight a season ago. Four CU players earned a spot on the preseason All-Big East team. Lydia Dimke was the Conference Player of the Year in 2016 and is predicted to do the same this season. Also making the preseason squad, Jaylee Winters, Taryn Cloth, and Brittany Witt. Creighton's blue-white scrimmage is Friday, August 11th. American Legion Regional Tournament starting today in North Dakota. Creighton Prep playing Papillion La Vista in a rematch of the Legion State title game. Prep wins it today by a score that should read 7-4. Zach Lucky goes 2-4 for four with an RBI. Papio's Nate Whitehill hits a two-run homer in the loss. Both teams back in action tomorrow, so Creighton Prep coming up on top on that one, 7-4. As we head toward the Husker season, uh, how important will it be for the defense to carry the day, do you think? I think pretty big as they get acclimated with new quarterback Tanner Lee. And uh, it seems like the defense is really buying into Bob Diaco's scheme. And I think that'll be huge going forward for the Black Shirts. That'll be interesting to see. Thanks, yep. Adam. Stay tuned. We'll have more after the break. Tonight on KMTV. Big Brother. Salvation. Then stay for 3 News Now live at 10. This primetime lineup sponsored by Chrysler Dodge Jeep.